You see, God is speaking to the church, his people today. Now, I'm telling you, we're living in a time when the enemy of your soul is on the move. He wants to discourage you. He wants to turn you aside. But then here comes God. Hey, that is good. Isn't it? Here comes God. And he does his thing. How many likes it when God does his thing? Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. So we just put our trust and our confidence in him, don't we? And we have heard of late especially how that God is speaking to the church. How that God has a word to say to his people. And what is he saying? Huh? Yes. He is encouraging his people because yes he is coming soon we've heard we've heard a lot about that lately haven't we because we know that he's coming soon now now the the title i don't know how these how the the lord just springs these titles on you and and it, you know, when you hear him, you think, my Lord, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> and then you get to praying about it, thinking about it, and it makes more sense what you think. That's right. But now, but now, what he has been dealing with me about is stop, look, and listen. Stop, look, and listen. So God is dealing with men and women today and 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 oh, I've heard pastor even say how, how that the Lord has been dealing with him about how that it's time to let things go. So, when I thought of stop, the Lord impressed on me. He wants his people to get serious with him. Let go of those things that have so easily beset you. Let them go. And God, you know, uh, this is what some people do. Well, I'm just trusting God. He's going to take it away from me. And God is saying, I want you to let go. Ah, woo. You want to move? <laughs> Come on. He says, I want you to move in to the realm of the spirit that I have for you. And you know what? A lot of people make excuses because they say, I just don't feel like it. How many knows you cannot go by feelings? Sometimes you feel like shouting. Sometimes you don't. And you have to shout anyhow. Come on now. So, stop. Stop allowing your 
himself. P.D. to be discouraged by the powers of the enemy. He, the enemy will try to discourage you and, and, and try to make you think that God doesn't even care about you anymore. And, and he'll say, why even pray? He doesn't hear you. How many knows that's a lie? So, so we hear what God is saying. And he tells us to seek his face. Can you say amen? amen. So, I, I, I tell you, because, yes, because we know, we've heard a lot about lately, because this is the way God has been dealing with our church, is that Jesus is getting ready to come. Now, you can either believe it or not. But he's going to come whether you believe it or not. And you're the one that's going to be left behind if you're not ready. So you see, what God is trying to encourage his people to do is to get ready, stay ready, be ready, get packed up and ready to go up. Come on now. You better say amen to me. I'll come and, woo, I'll come and hit you. Woo, I'll wake you up. Glory to God. So he says, stop trying to depend on your feelings and turn toward God. No matter how you feel, I'm going to praise him in here. Just like that song that they just got through. I'm going to praise him anyway. I might not feel like praising God, but I'm going to praise him anyway. I tell you, when, 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 when you know, when you're suffering with, with cancer or some kind of stupid disease, sometimes you don't feel like praising God. Oh, oh, sometimes. Oh. Lordy mercy, I have to make myself praise God a lot. Because I'm telling you, because I, I'm telling you, when you when you start getting up in age, <laughs> and you're not as spry as you used to, <laughs> you know. You can't even make an excuse and say, well, I'm old. I don't feel like shouting anymore. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shout if I have to hold on to the pew. See, see, I, 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 I sit right here. And let me tell you. When that worship team begins to worship and begins to sing and begin to praise God, honey, if you don't feel a praise, then something's wrong with you. So I'm standing here. I'm trying to be good. But oof. I may not get out there and shout like I used to, but honey, as long as I can hang on to the, woo, I'll just shout. So we stop making excuses why you can't praise God, why you can't worship God. So you got to get over yourself. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Stop. Look. Well, now, what are we going to look at, Sister Evelyn? You're going to look at the things that God has told us to look at. He has said over, Jesus has said over and over in his word, and we've heard about it because that is the message of the hour. Don't you believe it? That message of the hour is to watch. 
And we've heard, we've heard a lot about that lately. Watch. So what are we going to watch? Jesus said, watch. What are we going to watch? We're going to watch and wait for the coming of the Son of Man. Because Jesus said, in the hour that you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And are you ready? Oh, I'm telling you, see, that's why God is trying to impress upon men and women in the church today is to let go of those stupid things that has been holding you down for so long. You blame those things for not being able to worship God. I didn't do you. Get over yourself and praise God. This is the word that God is speaking to his people today. Is stop, look, and listen. Stop. But when the enemy whispers in your ears and says, you know, you don't really feel like praising God. You don't even feel like going to church. Just stay home. Now, how many has ever had that to happen to you? You just don't feel like going to church tonight. Stay home. And you know, <laughs> oh yeah, the thoughts come to my mind a few times. But you know what I start thinking of? I start thinking of that <laughs> anointed worship team. Dear Lord, I'll get to church and they'll get to singing and praising God. And, ooh, I won't be feeling like this very long. But you know what? If I stay home, I'm going to miss it. Come on. God is wanting to prepare a people for the rapture, for the coming of the Lord. Now, he's going to do what he's going to do. Whether we believe it or not. Who come a shandala bariata? Hallelujah. So I gave her some scriptures. I don't know how many of them I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use. But listen to this. In Matthew, and, and we, you've heard this a lot lately. Matthew 24, verse 4, verse 5 and 6. Verse 4 says this Take heed. That no man deceive you. See, in these last days, the enemy starts raising up people that will go out just to try to deceive God's people. Oh, mm, 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 mm. But he said, how will you know whether somebody comes to you and they tell you, in the name of the Lord. They prophesy in the name of the Lord. How are you going to know? God said, uh, uh, Jesus said they're going to do it. They're going to. And he said they would deceive the very elect. If at all possible. So God is saying, I want my people Stirred up. Moved by the power of the Holy Ghost. Have you ever. Honey. As, lo as long as I've been in the ministry. Honey. I've seen just about everything. Oh my Lord. Honey. Some people think that the, 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 the most spiritual that they act. the more they can draw people 
to themselves. Listen, there was a time I remember. Yes, and I, I still believe that God pours out his spirit in signs and wonders and miracles. I believe it because I've seen it. But I remember one time I was in a meeting. And this man got up and he said, Ooh, I have nail prints in my hands. Maybe you heard of this, Pastor. I've got nail prints. And there was blood. Blood in his hands. And I'm, I'm thinking, now Jesus. Now, 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 Lord. But God let me know in the spirit that was no more God than anything. You know what that man was found doing? He had a tack in his belt. And he would rub his hand over that tack to deceive God's people. And I remember going up to him. Let me see your hand, I said. Nah, that's not nail prints. That's something else. That is in the, in, living in the last days like we are. We must be full of the Holy Ghost. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you better receive him. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. And in these days, you need to know, I need to know the truth. Come on. Not everybody that comes in and they say, thus saith the Lord, is it Lord? Because Jesus said, they will be coming in my name. But he said, I didn't send them. See, this is why we must. That's all I tell you. We might not have very many here in our little church, but God, the Spirit of God is here to encourage RPA to seek the face of God and to be full of the Holy Ghost. Because without the Holy Ghost, you can be deceived. Because people can be very Deceptive. I don't know if any of you have ever had anybody come up to you and say, Thus saith the Lord, and you felt a yucky inside of you. You know what I mean? You feel. <laughs> but God is saying to His people that it's time to stop. Stop allowing the enemy. To fill you full of lies. And look. At what God is doing. Listen. To the spirit of God. How many has. Your suitcases. Packed. See. you. Ooh, glory to God. You see, when you know you're going on a trip, I don't know about you, but I start getting my suitcase back. We're, we're in, in just a couple of weeks, we're going to Dallas, Texas for a meeting. And, and, and you know, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to take with me. So, so I'm, you know, I'm getting prepared to... to to go. So just think about this. We're getting ready to take a trip. We're going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. 
And now is the time to get packed up and ready to go up. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, well, I just don't believe in all that, that tongue talk. It doesn't matter what you believe. That's it. And if you want to go in the rapture, you better get full of the Holy Ghost. No wonder. Because we know how close it is. I'm telling you, sin is working throughout this. Oh, I'm telling you, it's awful. It's awful how people even try to destroy one another. Lie on one another. Destroy one another. And God is saying to his people, get filled up. Because see, God, in these last days, he is doing a work and the devil doesn't like it because when the spirit and the power of God begins to move in us, through us in our sanctuary see the devil doesn't like it but God is preparing his people and he's saying Stop doing those things. Get it out of your life that you know God is not pleased with. Oh, you know, some people are so bound and they've been bound by these things for so long that if they didn't have them, they would miss them. Come on. And God is saying, I am preparing a people that want to make it. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. There is nothing in this world, nothing in this life that is worth missing the rapture. Mess, worth missing the coming of Jesus Christ. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain. Shall be caught up together. With them in the clouds. And then I like this. Then so shall we ever be with the Lord. Woo. Yeah, you got that scripture up there. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. But like I said a while ago, I've had people come up to me and say, oh, yay, Sister Evelyn. And I just want to knock their hand off of my head. Oh, Jesus, get your you know what I'm talking about? How many knows what I'm talking about? But the Holy Ghost inside of you. How many has the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Yes. Ah! There's some of the, the your hands aren't being raised. Uh, it's your turn. Getting it started, honey, all you have to do is start worshiping God. Oh. You're new at it, honey. Mm, mm, mm. But see, God, he says, not only do I want you to stop and look and know what, what time, what zone you're in, time zone. That Jesus is getting ready to split the clouds of glory. Yes. 
And let me tell you, buddy, I've been, I, I, I've been, I've been serving the Lord too long to, to miss it. And I want to take folks with me. Don't you? Hallelujah. You've already been picked. <laughs> Come on. And the Lord said, I want you to listen to me. Listen to me. And don't be so easily led by somebody else. But be led by the Holy Spirit. I don't know. This is not in my notes. What am I going to do? Oh, here's a scripture that I, I better read. Matthew 25, verse 13. Um, it said, watch. Wow. Okay. <laughs> watch, therefore. For you know not the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So, what are we going to do? I don't know. But I'm going to watch. And I want to be ready. How many wants to be ready? Don't let Anything in this life, in this world, stop you from going with, under the anointing. It will not be worth it for anything that you allow to hinder you. Let me tell you, honey, it's not going to be worth it. To miss what God has planned for us. Yes. To the faithful. To the faithful that will say yes to God. I will follow you. I will follow you. Listen, 1 Thessalonians, I think I gave this to you, 4, 16 through verse 18. It says this, for the Lord himself, woo, reach over and punch somebody and say himself. <laughs> now, not too hard. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Woo, 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 woo. You know, uh, we like to shout, don't we? Boy, I mean, some of us do. And just think, it says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Oh, that ought to, we ought to feel right at home. <laughs> with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18. What are we supposed to do? Wherefore... Comfort one another with these words. So, that's, whew, some people don't want to come to church. My Lord, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some has or is. But encourage one another. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Oh, huh. yeah, Jesus loves you. Honey, Jesus loves you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stay cool. Because he's coming. 
He's coming. He's coming. Oh, with a shout. Well, that means I can go up with a shout too. Woo! Woo! And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That ought to make us huh? shout. Yeah. That ought to make us more determined than ever before. That if there's anything in your life that is not pleasing to God and you know it, get rid of it. Drop it. Let go of it. Because it could happen at any time. Stand to your feet. Look over at your neighbor and say, are you ready? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for our... Thank you, hon. I thank God for our little church here. You know, you know, I, maybe I should, oh yeah, I, I should, I like to watch other, you know, I like to watch some preachers on, on TV, and if they get too overbearing, I, I can turn them off. <laughs> but I tell you. I look at the people that they preach to, the crowds, and I'm going, my Lord. Doug's got a more anointing in his little finger than... <laughs> you know. But that's why the Spirit of God encourages you, encourages us to be faithful to the house of God because Jesus is getting ready to come and I don't want to miss out on anything. And if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that has not been filled with the Holy Ghost, I pray that before you leave this place, this morning that you will allow him to come in and take residence in you. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's the reason the enemy has been fighting you against receiving the Holy Ghost. Because God is doing a supernatural work. And he has people that he uses, that he moves through. How many wants God to use you Oh, my Lord. In these last days. I know I, you do too, but I want to be so sensitive in the spirit that when I go out, I don't care if I'm in a restaurant. I don't care if I'm on a plane. I don't care if I'm in a grocery store. But if God puts somebody in front of me and I sense in the spirit that I need to minister to them, I want to have that guidance of the Holy Spirit 
no matter where we go out there. We went to Denny's not too long ago and our little server came up to our table. But we sensed there was something that that little lady needed. So we said, can we pray for you? And she, oh, yes. So we took her hand and we prayed for her right there in Denny's. And she began to tell us what was going on in her life. But see, God, you never know where you go, but be sensitive to the Spirit of God because there's somebody out there that just needs your hand. And when we go in there now, she's the first one to our table. And you know, not only did, did God do something for her, but she told other people, and now they're coming. <laughs> Are you the ones that prayed for blah, 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 blah? Yeah. Would you pray for me? Yeah. See, the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you. And there's work to do. And let Him use you. Father, you see your people that are standing to their feet. Lord, we want to be used of you. We know you're coming soon. And use us for this day and this hour. Help us to reach out. Help us to be sensitive to those that are around us. That you can reveal to us those that have needs. And we can be in the place, Lord. That you can use us at such a time as that. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How many wants God to use you? Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Stay filled up. Stay prayed up. And don't miss your time of prayer and reading the word. This is your life. And friend, Jesus loves you. And if you are here today and you have a need, he's here to meet that need for you in Jesus name